Hi, welcome to Godly Storytime and Merry Christmas. It's the second Sunday of Christmas. Did you know that we get to celebrate Christmas for more than one day? No, Christmas Day is one day, January, uh, December 25th, but we celebrate the Christmas season for 12 days. It took us four weeks to get ready for the mystery of Christmas and 12 days to celebrate it. All in all, it's still a nice time of year, isn't it? And I hope you've been enjoying it. And today I have a story that kind of fits in between Christmas and Epiphany. We'll see if you can pick up on the clues, okay? Christmas is celebrated all over the world in all different kinds of ways. Here in America, we have a lot of gift giving and decorating and be um, decorating going on. So much fun and so busy. And there's a lot of focus on Santa Claus bringing gifts, and that's a lot of fun, isn't it? Well, there are other ways of celebrating Christmas and other gift givers in other parts of the world. So today I want to tell you the story that comes from Italy. It's about the Christmas witch. Don't get scared. Not that kind of witch. It's the kind of witch, kind of like the Magi, because she was so gifted in her wisdom and able to heal things and help people that they thought she might be magic. So here's the story of the Christmas witch. <clears throat> Let me tell you a little about her first. So there are many kind spirits in Italy and one of the nicest is Bifana, the Christmas witch. She's as much a part of Christmas tradition in Italy as Santa Claus is in America. And like Santa Claus, Bifana appears only once a year. She comes 12 days after Christmas during the Festival of Epiphany, which celebrates the visit of the three wise men to the infant Jesus, or Magi, as we've talked about. Her name, Bifana, is dry, uh, derived from the word Epiphania, the Italian name for that religious festival. And long ago, people thought she was an evil old witch. They rang bells of clay and blue glass trumpets to frighten her away. But now they know that she is kind and gentle and her gifts are awaited eager, eagerly by all the children of Italy. The miracle of Bethana is not in history books, but every Italian child knows that her magic will return every year. And here's her story. A very long time ago, a woman lived in a small house in the Tuscan Hills of Italy. Her name was Bifana, and because she could tell fortunes and heal the sick, people thought she had magical powers. And although she had no children, Bifana had six cats and a bird in a cage, and the bird's name was Uccellino, or Little Bird. Bifana's house was on a hill. At the bottom of the hill was a forest where she could gather sticks for firewood. One day, she went down the hill many times, and she returned each time with her arms full of sticks. So by sundown, she was very tired, but there was still one more bundle of sticks at the bottom of the hill. I must get it all, said Bifana, or old Giovanni, the woodcutter, will steal it again. Then she stopped at her gate in surprise. She could hear bells. Far away, there were riders approaching on the road. They came closer. Three men mounted on camels stopped beside Bifana's gate. The camels were laden with rich gifts and bags of gold. The men looked old and wise and were dressed in splendid robes. We come from a far country, said one of the wise men. We are looking for the Christ child who was born in Bethlehem. Good woman, can you tell us the way? said Bifana. It's there across the mountains and valleys beyond the great seas. Turning to point the way, she was astonished to see a great star shining in the sky. The star, cried the wise men. God has sent us a splendid shining star to lead us the way to the child. Perhaps we are nearing the end of our journey. But good woman, have you not heard of this great miracle? Bifana's eyes grew wide with wonder. The star shone more brightly than any she had ever seen. Surely these were not ordinary travelers. 
I live by myself, said Bafana. I didn't know such a baby had been born. Oh, please, may I come with you? Yes, good woman, you may come with us, said the wise man, but you must come at once. We cannot stay. We must not lose sight of the star. Oh, sir, said Bafana, please wait till I gather the rest of my firewood. If I go with you now, Giovanni will steal it, and then I won't have enough wood to keep warm. But the wise man was pointing to the star and beckoning the others to follow. The camels were moving away. And a gift for the baby, cried Bafana. I, I must bring toys for the Christ child. Running down the hill, Bafana snatched up the last of the bundle of sticks and struggled her way back up with the heavy burden. The riders were gone and a dark cloud had hidden the star. Bafana was alone and forlorn. She had only her cats and Uccellino, her bird, to comfort her. Sadly, she crept into bed. But the next morning, the orange sun rose over the purple mountains and streamed into Bafana's bedroom, and Uccellino began to sing. No longer did she feel tired. She was filled with happiness, and she jumped out of bed. The weariness in her bones had vanished overnight, and she felt like she could float on air. Humming to herself, Bifana dressed and made her breakfast, fed Uccellino and the six cats. Then she ran next door to ask the Signora Martellini, the, pa the pasta maker, to care for them. At last she was ready to go, but when she looked around her house to find presents for the Christ child, she could find nothing to bring the baby. Sadly, she put on her boots, and her old red cape. It was better to go empty-handed than not go at all. But when Bafana said goodbye to the cats and Uccellino, she found a miracle lying on the floor beside her back door, a large gray sack filled to the brim with toys. Bafana clapped her hands with joy, then slinging the heavy sack over her shoulder, she closed the door tightly and went on her way. And so Bafana's long, long journey began. Searching for the star and the wise men, she traveled around the world. Her sack never grew heavy. Bafana never grew tired. But she never caught up with the star. She never saw the wise men. And one day, just after sunset, she came to a farm in a small village. A thousand stars began to twinkle in the sky and two shepherds were guarding their sheep. The shepherds were surprised to see a stranger. Good woman, they said, what do you want? I'm looking for the Christ child, Bifana replied. Can you tell me which way to go? And then the shepherds told her of a miracle. Last night, while we were sleeping beside our flock in this peaceful valley, all at once the dogs barked and the sheep began to bleat. And angels were singing, and a radiant star shone in the sky in a blaze of light. The light of the star shone upon a cave in the side of a hill, and a man was guarding the entrance. An ox and a donkey lay on the straw. The Virgin Mary was kneeling beside the manger, and there lay the Christ child fast asleep. Reverently, the shepherds bowed their heads, we fell upon our knees and gazed in wonder at the child. Bafana was filled with joy. At last, she was nearing the end of her journey. Picking up her bag of toys, she thanked the shepherds and said goodbye. She ran across the fields until she came to the hill. Poor Bafana, the cave was dark. No one was there. So Bafana went on with her journey. For years and years, she traveled on all the roads of the world, but she never caught up with the star. She never found the Christ child. Although Bafana was terribly disappointed, she never stopped looking. She went from church to church, hoping to find the baby Jesus asleep in the nativity at the altar. But every time she ran up to the Precipio, she saw that the figures were not real. Even the angels hanging overhead were made of plaster. One day, 
Lafana came to a village that was only a crossing on the road. The church was the smallest she'd ever seen. Oh, but the sun was so hot that she went inside to rest. And there in the cool darkness with the candles burning and the sweet smell of incense in the air, she heard a voice from the stillness echoing in the silent church. Poor Bifana, you have tried for so long to find the Christ child, but the baby Jesus is no longer in Bethlehem. His spirit rests in every child. He lives in all of them. Your place is among the children of the world. The voice stopped speaking. Bifana sat in the darkness, her heart beating with joy, for she knew there would always be children waiting for her. From that time on, Bifana traveled everywhere at Christmas time to see the children, from the Alps to Sicily. Her bag was never empty. Wherever she went, she left toys for all the boys and girls creeping into their bedrooms when they were fast asleep. But if they'd been naughty, she only left a lump of coal. The Christ child was born a very long time ago, but Bafana is still making her journey. She has left gifts for children all over the world, for the sons and daughters of kings in rich palaces and the children of poor men in shabby huts. The poorer the family, the more presents Bavana wants to give because she does not like to see anyone unhappy, especially at Christmas time. Her greatest wish is to bring joy and gladness to the hearts of children everywhere. Now, some children try to stay awake to watch Bifana come and go, but it does no good, for her magic power makes her invisible. You may hear the thump of a bag of toys upon the floor, but you won't catch a glimpse of the Christmas witch, and no matter how quickly you run to the door, you'll see nothing but footprints in the snow. And that's the story of the Christmas witch. Did you like that story? It was kind of different, wasn't it? It sounded a lot like our Santa Claus here in, in America. But the spirit is same, isn't it? The spirit of wanting to give joy and bring gladness to every heart, of sharing gifts with people that you love. All that's the same, isn't it? And what is that love that we're talking about? We're talking about the love of God. God's love that was so great that he bundled it into this little baby named Jesus and brought God's love into this world in a brand new way. And that's worth celebrating because that love, just like the story said, lives on in our hearts. The journey that God made into the world continues every single day in you and in me. And we continue to make that journey in love. So I hope this week you'll have a week filled with love, filled with joy, laughter. Continue to give gifts. We don't have to wrap them up and put them under a tree. We can give the gift of love every day through smiles, through hugs, through generosity and kindness and compassion. Those are all the gifts of love. And they come to us from God. So we'll never run out no matter how much we give. So you don't have to worry about giving it all away because it's never going to happen. God will always replenish those gifts in our hearts. So be generous and have fun. Have a feast and celebrate this wonderful time of Christmas with your family. Continue to draw those pictures, make paintings and sculptures, dance and sing, express the joy in your heart in whatever way feels right to you. And always, always, each day, take the prayers and concerns of your heart and lift them up to God. Let God know what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're thankful for, what you're worried about. These are all the things that God wants you to share. Share with him, share with each other. No, God is always there wanting to listen to you because God loves you so very much. And so do I. So, 
Peace be with you today and always, and I'll see you next time. Bye.